Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and so today um, we're going to talk about the Maximus Crosshair 8 Impact, because this is a motherboard I'm super excited for, and there's a lot of other people super excited for this board, because uh, it's Mini DTX, it's, uh, you know, it's supposed to be a high-end Mini DTX overclocking motherboard. Now, um, we're going to talk a bit about the VRM, because, uh, you know, that's obviously what I'm most interested in, and because I've seen a whole bunch of specula speculation about the VRM already going around, and this video right here has conf uh, has confirmed um, my expectations. I wouldn't say worst fear, but my expectations. So here's the thing. Um, Asus says that this motherboard, the extra real estate, helps us squeeze in additional features along with a VRM that uses TDA21472 power stages. These are freaking awesome. That's a 70 amp smart power stage from Infineon. You literally can't buy a better power stage from Infineon. Um, at least, as far as I know, at least, you can't buy a better power stage from Infineon than that. Like, th this is, this is the height of power stage technology over at Infineon. So, um, yeah, these are awesome. In a 8 plus 2 configuration. Notice the lack of mention, like, they didn't mention how many phases. They're just 8 plus 2 configuration. Not 8 plus 2 phases, just configuration. So, um... Uh, the thing is, this board is, with 99% certainty... A 4 plus 2 phase and I say that because this right here is an ASP 1405. This is a chip that Asus has been using for several years. It's probably a rebrand of the IR35201 and uh, well uh, the 35201 doesn't do more than eight phases but more importantly this chip doesn't do more than eight phases either. Okay that's that's the main thing it doesn't do more than eight phases. And now you could do, you know, eight phase V-core and then another voltage controller for your two phase SOC. But on a motherboard, this can, you know, this space limited, that's just probably like, that's almost certainly not the case. So yeah, this is a four plus two phase. Now, is that bad? Um, no, like my view on this is, is that, well, so I'd be interested in what Asus could like, because the, the one thing that I didn't really consider earlier until very earlier, like on my, until like my previous take of this video, I've tried to shoot this video like a thousand times at this point because uh, I don't know, it, it's like, I feel like I ramble too much and I'm not covering what I want to, or I'm making it unnecessarily too complicated, but <clears throat> so this, um, the, the thing is, by putting your TDA21472 power stages in parallel, you do get the efficiency benefits. So this is going to be a ridiculously efficient four phase. It can handle, you know, eight times 70 amps. So that's like 560, well, okay, it can't actually handle 560 amps because it'll produce like nine watts per power stage, actually more than that. It's, it's going to produce a lot of heat per power stage at that kind of output. So you're going to get, you know, eight times whatever that heat output is. And you're going to end up with something that this little heat sink right here, even with the fans, has no hope of ever dissipating. So, you know, it won't actually do 560 amps, but it is still very, very powerful. And within, say, and up to around, say, 200 amps output, it should actually be uh, very cool. Which uh, is is great because you know sixteen core uh, Ryzen three thousand is a thing. Um, who when, when it'll come out? We're not sure. There's a twelve core Ryzen um, Ryzen three thousand chip that already exists that's been confirmed. So you know that chip um, that chip also isn't gonna really like it's not gonna pull anywhere near as much power as the sixteen core. Like the sixteen core should pull about thirty three percent more current than the 12 core just because that's how many cores it, how many more cores it has but you, you get the idea so the the 12 core won't pull as much current as the 16 core but it's still not going to be exactly you know low current um it's also not necessarily the highest current consumption but definitely within within the itx form factor there's other like there's a bunch of issues with doing vrms on I, like small form factor boards and this isn't itx it's dtx because it's extended down here a bit but uh, the there's a bunch of issues because it's like you can't even hit like fit proper uh, heat sinks onto the boards. So, you know, Asus has basically decided that, well, we could maybe do like a set, like the thing is, you could have done a seven plus one. Okay, like that's the thing that I didn't realize until like last video take where I was like, this chip can, you know, this chip can run a seven plus one configuration. 
Um, there's actually a motherboard on X570 running it as a 7 plus 1 uh, controller. And then, you know, if you wanted your two-phase SoC, you just do a doubler for that. Um, as much as Asus hates them, you could just use a doubler. Or not, you could have a single-phase SoC VRM, which I think is absolutely unacceptable. But <laughs> but sure, you can, you can do... Or you can use a doubler. Um, and then for the V-Core... Right, um, you'd have your a, a true seven phase, and it would almost have the same uh, power handling capability as a four phase. It would have significantly lower output. It should have much less output ripple than than a four phase. Um, but I'm not sure. Like it would act well. The the thing is, you'd actually have to offset your well. The, the thing about a lot of modern power stages is that they don't necessarily like underclock well. If you if you'll take it that way, so. Um, like a TDA21472 at 400 kilohertz is not significantly less efficient at two, than at say 200 kilohertz. Um, so like while you could go from a four phase to a seven and then run the seven phase at like 250 kilohertz, that wouldn't actually r give you a huge efficiency advantage like it would if you had some, you know, discrete MOSFETs or really crap power stages from several years ago. Um, but these are so high end that you can just run them at 400 or 500 kilohertz all day and it's fine. Um, and then, you know, it's like the seven phase would have even less output ripple, but it's like, well, do you need less output ripple, right? Like if you, you, if you have 400, uh, if you're running four or 500 kilohertz on four phases, like your output ripple is probably low enough that it doesn't matter and going any higher isn't going to help, um, and adding doublers would obviously just uh, worsen the transient response. So um, I don't see a problem with this because within the size, like with the space constraints on this motherboard, um, you know, Asus did what they, like basically what they prioritized with this VRM design was good transient response, good power handling capability. And, you know, they probably sacrificed some amount of output ripple and input ripple just because they have a lower phase count, but you can offset that with higher switching frequency, which you can completely negate the, the output ripple increase from the low phase count with just switching frequency. Um, also, depending on the output filtering, you might not even, you might not even need more switching frequency. Really kind of depends on how much current you're outputting and, and what kind of inductors you're using. So th that there is just a hard, uh, like that, that's a hard thing to say for sure. If like it would be better, if it would be significantly better if they use doublers, I kind of doubt it. Um, but definitely, um, the priority with this VRM was power handling capability and, uh, transient response. And those are both good things to have. So I, and, and then the fact that it's a four phase is just kind of a case of, well, there's not enough space for more phases. And so I'm okay with the sort of co like compromise that Asus came to here with this four phase. And now somebody's going to be like, Buildzoid, but you hated the four phase on the Maximus 11 hero. Yes. And I still do. <laughs> Funny you bring that up because I do still hate that one. Um, so here's the thing about the four phase on the Maximus 11 hero. Um, it's not a bad VRM, okay? Like that that's not the issue I have with the four phase on the Maximus 11 hero. You can make a good four phase. This right here is an incredible four phase. And what the maximum hero uh, Maximus 11 hero has is a good four phase. And unfortunately, the Maximus 11 hero's VRM somehow found itself on a code and the formula, which both cost way more than the hero does. Uh, somebody's going to be like, but that's the non-Wi-Fi version. I'm t looking at the Wi-Fi version because uh, you see this? This is the Maximus 11 gene. It's 309 quid. This is 295 quid. Um, this has Wi-Fi. That has Wi-Fi. Like, that. that's the main thing is these both have Wi-Fi. Um, so that means that they're at, like, feature parity, relatively speaking, right? Obviously, one of them is MATX, one of them is ATX, but my issue here is that this has a 5 plus 2 phase VRM using 35, 55, 60 amp power stages. The Hero uses a 4 phase using uh, SIC 639 power stages. They cost the same. That's my issue with the Hero. This is a ripoff. That right there, this is just like design, you know, compromises. This is just a straight up ripoff because that's a 300 quid board with a VRM worse 
than Asus's own 300 quid board. And if I brought bring up Gigabyte, then this board looks absolutely ridiculous because Gigabyte has a motherboard that costs way less than this that also uses the, that uses the same power stage but uses four more of them and doublers. So, like, this board is just, like, that's the problem I have with the four-phase VRM on the Maximus 11 Hero, is that the Maximus 11 Hero's power stages are $9 a piece, right? SIC 639. Actually, they're not $9. They're $0.9 a piece, right? $0.9 a piece. The Maximus 11 Gene uses power stages that are, like, $1.8 a piece or $1.9 a piece. So... This uses power stages that are twice more, twice as expensive. It has an entire phase more. This is a 5 plus 2 phase. That's a 4 plus 2. And yet this board costs basically the same as this. Also, this one has less space for its VRM. Because that's MATX. So that's my problem with the Maximus 11 Hero. In a void, the 4 phase VRM on the Hero is not, not bad. It's just that it's really overpriced. Right? Like, if, if the price wasn't a thing, and if other motherboards didn't exist, including Asus's own motherboard lineup, because there's also the Apex, which is only a little bit more expensive than the Gene, and this has a straight-up 8-phase for its V-Core. Um, you know, so, yeah, 8-phase, 5-phase, 4-phase. And the difference in price is basically nothing. Um, and this is straight-up more expensive and still a 4-phase. And this is really expensive and still a 4-phase. Um... So, you know, if, if Asus's own motherboard lineup didn't exist, the Maximus Hero would be like, it's an acceptable board, you know? But other motherboards do exist, and that's why I think the Maximus 11 Hero is really, really bad. And it's bad because it has a four phase for way more money than it should ever cost, right? Like, this VR, the VRM on this board is disproportionately cheap to produce for Asus, relative to how much that board costs. And I can't see really any features on this motherboard that like other boards from Ace, even Asus don't have that it's like, yeah, it makes sense that this is so expensive because I mean, I think the Gene actually has better networking, doesn't it? Or something like that. Or I can't remember. Wait, what's the IO like? Yeah, no, okay. It's it's a different board that adds the extra networking capabilities. Oh, it must be the code or something. So that that's why I don't like the four phase on the Maximus Eleven Hero. Like nobody will tell you the Maximus Eleven Hero is bad at overclocking because it isn't. Um, the VRM does run warmer than the competition at the same price point because it's got less phases than everybody else. I mean, less power stages than everybody else and less phases too. Um, but it is not a bad VRM. It's just really overpriced. This right here is still not a bad VRM. It's just uh, here it makes actually sense that you have a four phase because quite frankly, how you would fit anything bigger on here, um, I don't really know, right? Like that's, that's the main thing. It's just like, I'm not sure you could fit anything bigger than this if you tried. Whereas here, like, it's an ATX board. There's space, like, there's plenty of space to build as much of a VRM as you like. And Asus just kind of decided, you know what, we're building a 4. And that was, uh, that was the end of that. And the thing is, you could, the, the thing is, also, with the Hero, is that since they're using these SIC 639s, if they wanted to build a 5 phase, they, all they had to do is, like, buy an ISL 69138 voltage controller from Intersil, and, uh, you know, instead of the controller that is on these boards, because this uses the, like, the voltage controller on this board is the same voltage controller as on this board. It's like the ASP1400. Um, oh yeah, and this also has the ASP1400, because, you know, Saving money on your second to flagship motherboard. That's that's what Asus is all about. In their own, like, their own money, not yours. <laughs> they still charge you the full price for it, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, so, so the thing is, is just, like, they could just take two more of these chips, you know? Increase the cost of producing the board by, like, three or four dollars. And I'm sure they could have fit an extra phase. Like, a whole extra, like... That, that's basically the problem. And the VRM would have run cooler for it. 
They could have also redesigned the heat sink. That would also give them better temperatures, but it's just like, so the, the issue I have with the Hero is not that it's a bad VRM, it's that it's really overpriced for what it is. This right here is just like, well, this is still going to be ridiculously expensive. Also, the, the, the power stages in this VRM are like three times the cost of the ones on the Hero. See? Actually, more than three times the cost. Like, these are ridiculously expensive. But, uh, um, yeah, so this board's going to be ridiculously expensive. But here, you know, it's actually physically difficult to fit a larger VRM. The Hero has, as far as I'm no concerned, no excuse for having a four phase other than that Asus was being really, really cheap. Um, you know, the, the doublers are just kind of a secondary thing. Um, so, yeah. Um, anyway, so I'm super excited for the Crosshair 8 Impact. I can't wait to see how it overclocks. Um, like, I wonder, wait, do they show the I.O.? Does it have HDMI? No, it doesn't. Nope, nope, doesn't have any HDMI. Damn it. <laughs> I need an APU. Like I wanted it for APU overclocking. Actually, it probably doesn't even support APUs, does it? Since it's X570, but still like, so I'm s still super excited for this board because we have LN2 features down here. We have safe boot, retry, LN2 mode, which I think is that jumper over there. This is probably a memo K switch, which is like the most useless switch Asus. Actually, no, that might be slow mode. But uh, there's probably a memo K switch somewhere on this motherboard, which is like the most useless switch Asus had ad has added to a motherboard in recently. Um, seriously, that thing makes overclocking RAM straight up worse, not better. Um, but uh, anyway, it's yeah. So I'm still super excited for this board. And I just wanted to point out that this is going to be like the, the V Core VRM is going to be a four phase, and it doesn't. It's not a problem. It's fine. It's just it's not fine when they're when they build a cheap four phase and then charge you three hundred quid for it. That's not fine. That's ripping people off. This is just kind of living with the realities of having a little motherboard, right? Like <laughs> just you couldn't fit a bigger VRM if you tried. So yeah, hopefully. Um, this video makes sense and doesn't look, make me look like a complete hypocrite just because I like a mini DTX, like just because I'm excited for this mini DTX board. And seriously, Asus hasn't paid me to make this video. It's literally just a case of, you know, like this is a board I'm excited for. And it's like, oh, it's a four phase. And it's like, well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Especially considering these power stages are what they decided to go with. Um, and still, it'll be it'll be interesting to see how the some of the other ITX boards do because I know that uh, there's one that's a six phase using these. Um, yeah, so so things will be interesting. Anyway, um, so thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comments section below. And uh, yeah, if you'd like to support what I did, I skip something. Like, share, subscribe. Oh, yeah, there's notification. There's the notification squad bell button thing. that You can hit that. That way you don't miss my uploads. Um, and what else was there? Right, no, if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, um, I have a Patreon and also Teespring where you can pick up shirts, stickers, uh, and all kinds of other, like, shirts, stickers, posters, socks. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, there's socks. And hoodies recently. I added hoodies. Um... So, yeah, you, you can pick all of that up on Teespring. There's a link to that down in the description below. And if you don't want to buy anything, you can just support me directly through Patreon. Um, you know, and that, that helps fund things like purchasing uh, this motherboard when it comes out. Because I am definitely, like, if I can't beg Asus into sending me a sample, I'm definitely buying one. And now somebody's going to be like, you only made this video so that Asus would send you the board. <laughs> um... Oh, well, I, I guess I'll have to buy one just to not look like a shell. Well, whatever. See ya.